This video is sponsored by the Crazy Kings of Toys. Come visit their website and find out why they are so crazy. Hello everybody, Tony Beers here again, and this is Off the Toy Shelf, a toy review show. And in this episode of Off the Toy Shelf, I'm going to be talking about Captain Boomerang. Captain Boomerang was a boy named Digger Harkness, who was raised by his poor mother in Australia, not knowing his father. As he grew up, he became very skilled in using a boomerang. Later, he learned his father owned a toy company in America. His father, learning of his boomerang skills, brought him to America where he made Digger the mascot of a new boomerang toy, calling him Captain Boomerang. The public laughed at Digger's Captain Boomerang persona. Humiliated and angered by this, Digger turned to a life of crime using his boomerang skills. He later joined Flash's villain team, the Rogues. He was also a member of the Suicide Squad alongside Bronze Tiger, who is also in this way. Captain Boomerang appeared in two of my favorite Justice League episodes. He first appeared in the episode Task Force X. In this episode, Captain Boomerang and three other villains, Deadshot, Plastique, and the Clack King, were recruited by the government to steal the Annihilator from the Watchtower. The episode plays out like a heist movie, and even though Task Force X are the villains, you still root for them and hope they succeed. Task Force X is the DC animated version of the Suicide Squad. I guess they figured that a name like Suicide Squad isn't appropriate for a show marketed towards children. Captain Boomerang's second appearance was in the episode titled Flash and Substance. This episode takes a closer look at the Flash and his world. It's a very well done, lighthearted, and humorous episode, and it's one of my favorites. Personally, Captain Boomerang is not an essential figure in my collection. And if it wasn't for the fact that he has an Apache Chief figure piece, I wouldn't have got him. Now, it's not because I don't like the character, or it's not because I the figure is not well made. It's because I feel neutral about the character. I don't love him and I don't hate him. So I could just, I could do without him. One of the reasons that I don't find him essential is because I don't like his costume. With the hat, the long coat, and the stubble, he kind of looks like a homeless person. His costume looks too plain to me. I don't like superhero or villain costumes that look like they just grabbed it out of their closet. Other examples of this kind of costume where it looks like they just got it out of their closet is Superboy in his black t-shirt and jeans, animated Supergirl in her first costume, the second Starman, and Luke Cage. They just don't look right next to other heroes and villains. In my opinion, Captain Boomerang's best costume is the one that they used in Flash and Substance on Justice League, and this is the same costume I would have chosen for the figure. Another reason why I didn't like this Captain Boomerang figure is because he and Bronze Tiger are the only two figures that were not in Super Friends in this wave. In my opinion, the last two figures in this wave should have been Zan and Jaina. For two reasons. One, because they were on Super Friends, and two, Jaina would have gave us a female in the wave. But Mattel made them San Diego Comic Con exclusives instead. My second choices for the last two figures in this wave would have been Rima, a very obscure DC character that appeared in Super Friends, and Bizarro. I was amazed that during my research, I found out that Mattel never made a Bizarro figure for this toy line. And he would have been perfect for this wave, too. He was on Super Friends, and he is an A-list character. <laughs> Hell, I would have even preferred Martin or Wendy instead of Captain Boomerang and Bronze Tiger. At least they were on Super Friends, and they might have attracted new fans to the toy line since they were on Young Justice as well. However, I am very glad that we got some of the figures that we did. I thought we'd never see a figure of El Dorado or Apache Chief. Now, on to the figure review.
Okay, let's take a look at Captain Boomerang in his package. As you can see, Captain Boomerang is in a cool action pose, and he is in a nice clear bubble, which makes the entire figure, as well as his boomerang accessory, easily seen. This is great for in-package collectors. Behind the figure on the card, you can see nice artwork of other DC characters. At the top of the package is the DC Universe logo. In the middle on the left is the Choking Hazard Warning. At the bottom it says Classics, on the right it says Captain Boomerang, Wave 18, Figure 4, Adult Collector, and on the left is a nice logo for Captain Boomerang. When I turn Captain Boomerang's package to the side, you can see it says Includes your Collect and Connect Figure Piece, and it tells you which figure piece you're getting, and you're getting the head and lower torso of Apache Chief. And it says the exact same thing on the opposite side. And when you look at the bottom of the package, you can see Apache Chief's head and lower torso. At the back of the package, at the top right, you can see Captain Boomerang's biography. And on the left is a nice photo of the figure. And below Captain Boomerang's biography is his statistics. And at the bottom, at the left, is all the other figures in the wave. And on the right is the Collect and Connect figure, Apache Chief. Okay, let's take a look at Captain Boomerang out of his package. Taking a look at Captain Boomerang's sculpt, just like Toy Man, he has the DC Universe Classics tall, thin body. And he has a lot of good, original, detailed sculpting over it. Captain Boomerang has the most original sculpt of all the figures in this way. Looking at Captain Boomerang's head, he has a lot of detail in it. Like I said before, villains often have a lot of character in their faces. Captain Boomerang has an evil looking smile on his face as if he's up to something. I would never trust a guy with a face like that. And looking at his hat you can see all the texture they sculpted into it. When I turn his head to the side you can see they even sculpted stubble on his face. It's not just painted on, you can actually feel the texture on his face. Looking at his arm you can see folds and wrinkles in his gloves as well as on his sleeve. And you can see stitching on his coat. He has a nicely sculpted scarf that is a separate piece attached to the figure. His boomerangs are also separate sculpted pieces attached to the figure. His coat is another separate sculpted piece attached to the figure. Turning the figure to the back, you can see on his coat there is a lot of sculpting detail, such as stitching, folds, and wrinkles. Looking at his boots, we finally have ones that are sculpted on this time instead of just being painted like the ones before him. They even went to the trouble of sculpting little boomerangs at the bottom of his feet, which is a really nice touch. So overall, Captain Boomerang's sculpt is really great. It's probably the best sculpt in this entire wave. Okay, let's take a look at Captain Boomerang's paint. Captain Boomerang's gloves are painted with this nice glossy black paint which does a great job of representing leather. The black part of his boots are also painted with this glossy paint. The silver part of his boot is painted with a nice shiny silver color but is not as glossy as the black part which gives a nice distinction between the metal and the leather part of his boots. His boomerangs and belt buckle are painted with the same shiny silver paint as his boots. However, I have to say that the boomerangs have a kind of a sloppy paint job. Also, his boomerangs are not painted on the other side. So overall, aside from the boomerangs, Captain Boomerang's paint job is fairly good. For articulation, Captain Boomerang has the most articulation of all the figures in this wave. His head is on a standard head joint and it goes up and down and all the way around. His shoulder is on a ball joint and it goes out and in and all the way around. His arm swivels at the bicep then it goes all the way around. Just like Toy Man, Captain Boomerang has a double jointed elbow that bends at two points. His hand swivels at the wrist and it goes all the way around. He has an upper torso ab crunch joint that moves back and forth. 
He has a swivel at the waist that goes all the way around. He has a hinge joint at the hip that goes out and in and back and forth. His leg swivels at the thigh and it goes all the way around. He has a double jointed knee that bends at two points. He has a single joint at the ankle that goes up and down, and unfortunately on mine it is loose. So overall, Captain Boomerang's articulation is really good. He has the most articulation out of all the figures in this wave, and you can get a lot of cool poses out of him. Captain Boomerang comes with three accessories, and the first of course being a boomerang. The boomerang is made out of a very soft plastic. I would have preferred that it had been more firm. The boomerang fits easily into either of Captain Boomerang's hands. Unfortunately, there's only one boomerang. I would have preferred to have at least two, that way I could pose him with a boomerang in each hand. Captain Boomerang's final two accessories are Apache Chief's head and lower torso. Only two more pieces of Apache Chief to go. Okay, comparing Captain Boomerang to Black Vulcan and Toy Man, you can see that Captain Boomerang is a little bit taller than Black Vulcan, but is about the same height as Toy Man. Toy Man's a little bit taller only because of the headpiece he's wearing. And you can also see that Captain Boomerang is thinner than Black Vulcan, but is about the same size as Toy Man. And comparing Captain Boomerang to just Toy Mag, you can see that they share a lot of the same parts. Their chest, torso, and upper legs are exactly the same. And speaking of same parts, if you look at Captain Boomerang's boomerang and Black Vulcan's headpiece, you can see that it's the exact same piece, only different size. So overall, Captain Boomerang is a nice figure. He has a great sculpt. Aside from the boomerangs, he has a very good paint job. He has a lot of articulation, although some of the joints are loose. His accessories are decent, although I could have used another boomerang and of course a figure stand. And I personally don't like his costume and don't consider him essential to my collection. However, I know that Flash fans will love him and I do recommend him to Flash fans wanting a modern Captain Boomerang in their collection. So, my final grade for Captain Boomerang is a C+. I got this figure from my good buddies at thecrazykingsoftoys.com. They have toys from Marvel, DC, G.I. Joe, Transformers, Lego, Monster High, My Little Pony, Masters of the Universe, Star Wars, Littlest Pet Shop, Doctor Who, Dragon Ball Z, and many more. Visit their website at www.crazykingsoftoys.com. Remember, that's a crazy with a K. Come find out why they are so crazy. I'm Tony Beers, and I'll see you next time.